are we anyway? I couldn't say precisely. Mountains. Yeah? Is that what they are? I must have been out of my mind when I let you talk me into this. Mike, old boy, what's the hurry this year? Let's go down by trade, make a bit of a holiday of it, see some scenery. This bird must be taking us by way of Bulgaria to see his mother-in-law or something. Lovely little country, Bulgaria. I went there on the photographic assignment once, 52. Had a charming little thing. She had an extraordinary name, Mushka. Mushka. Hmm. Is your move, isn't it, my old boy? I moved my knight to Queen's Three yesterday. <laughs> Schnapps, how about you? Mm. Help! Help! What was that? I think we just crashed the sound barrier. speaking. Are you expecting a train? What? A train. Expecting what? A train. No, no, of course not. Why should we be expecting a train this afternoon? There hasn't been a train to Gadavia in five years. It's against government policy. I know. I commanded it to stop. But it refused. It must be stopped. Herr Baronsky will be furious. What you have to do to get a drink around here? Setting up rockets? Typical continental service. What is it, Mark? A train is coming. A train? A train is coming! A train is coming! Hans! Hans, quickly, quickly! Get everything ready. Get the covers off. Get the rooms ready. Hans, the fire and the boiler for hot water. A train is coming! What did he say? He said a train is coming! Chances for getting a drink, Captain. Are we going to be here long enough? Weinstube, bar, drinking, schnapps, schlivvitz. I'll go look myself. Hi, fellas. You got a bar around here? Commandant Kerner. How do you do? Mike Wilson. What's the uh, celebration? Celebration? Yeah, what is it? Sort of a festival or something? Native costumes and everything? Uh, <laughs> don't do that, will you, buddy? I got a very nervous stomach. Oh, hello. <laughs> don't 
you see, we're on assignment to cover the music festival at Salzburg. We do it every year. Usually we fly down, but... Hello. Any tea, gang? What's the snack, Mike? I don't know. I don't get it. I must ask you to stay to business in Gudavia. Come again, Commandant. Where? Gudavia. You are now in Italy, the capital of Gudavia. Well, you got me. I mean, where the... Uh, where is Gudavia? Must be one of those sort of, uh, buffer states. This is Gudavia, here. This is Gudavia. Well, I never heard of it. <laughs> Gadavia. Well, I can't seem to see it here. I must insist. Look, look, look. Don't, don't, don't get in a spin about anything. I mean, uh, we're a couple of working newspaper men, that's all, and we want to get to Salzburg. Now, if you don't want us here, just say so, and we, we'll get back and wait in the train until it leaves. There's no problem. What train? Why the... What happened? Luggage. I haven't a clue. It was there last time I looked. Huh. There's something very odd going on here. No train, and what's more, no Gadavia. The kingdom, the democracy of Gadavia, gentlemen, although quite small, lies just to the southwest of... Uh, to the southwest of... Uh... Anyway, you've no right here at all. Now, just a moment. Mr. Wilson is an American subject. Citizen. A uh, citizen. And I am British. British. Yes, by birth. And if you think for a moment... That, that is I... enough. Come. Just a minute, relax, play along with them. I'll uh, get in touch with the American consul and get this comic opera character straightened out. Yes, right you are. And I'll get on to our chaps. Come. Extraordinary. No American consul. What's more, no British consul either. We're a bit incommunicado then, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yes, I would say that. It's extraordinary. Howard, you're repeating yourself. Oh, sorry. It is extraordinary. Today, we'll be approaching the point of maximum impregnation of the subjects, rising to 300,000 units. But is it possible to foretell the results beyond these limits? Certainly not. It's a great risk we are taking then. Science is a series of risks. All therapy eventually reaches a point of no return. Dressed enough and we have what we want. A little too much and... Consider that only three tenths of a degree may make all the difference between genius and nothing. You mean idiot? A thing without a mind is nothing. An unfortunate failure. There have been too many. Herr Kerner is on the phone again, sir. He insists he must speak to you. Herr Kerner insists, does he? What is it, Kerner? Well, don't bother me about it here. Send it back wherever it came from. I'm afraid there may be some risk here, Doctor. I suspect the two passengers, an American and an Englishman, of being spies. What makes you think they are spies? Half a train with no engine, arriving suddenly. You've taken precautions. Naturally, the best of precautions. I have them both in jail. In jail? You're a blundering idiot, Colonel. You can't put an American and an English journalist in jail. Take them out immediately. You mean out of Gudavia? No, of course not. Not out of the country. You're probably wrong, as usual. But let's be sure. Make a fuss of them. Do everything possible. Tell Lochna to do the same. Perhaps I'll see them myself tomorrow. Misunderstanding, gentlemen. Of course, it was all a misunderstanding. You accept my apologies. Sure, forget it. I give you the freedom of Gudar. I give you the keys of the city. We have arranged a suite at the hotel. Just see if you can arrange for a car so that we can get out of here. Oh, I'm so sorry, but that is not possible. Why not? There is no car. They have no cars here. 
Ah, we have one, yes. But it is engaged at the moment on official business. Where's the telegraph office? Just here. As a matter of interest, gentlemen, we are now in the King Ferdinand Platz, named after our late king. Look here, if you don't mind, perhaps you could show me just where Godard is. Go in there and shoot a wire to the office and tell them where we are. But my God. Look, we may be on a newer map or something. I don't know, will you? Right. Fine. I'll get to the hotel. This way, please. Welcome. Hands quickly, the luggage. Is the room ready, Herr Lochner? Yes, Herr Gunner. Uh, this gentleman and his friend are to be made as comfortable as possible during our stay. Sure. Uh, you think you may make it by tonight? Uh. <laughs> 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 well, now, if you will just sign for yourself and your friend. Uh, Herr Lochner, what room are we giving them? Uh, the bridal suite. The, uh, uh, it has the best view and the best bed, if such as it just is. Just so it's a bed. We're not going to be here long enough for it to matter. <laughs> Uh, how much will that be? Well, there's no charge, sir. Well, no charge at all? No, sir. Oh. Well, that's very decent of you. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, when will that be delivered in London? It won't be delivered, sir. I beg your pardon? It won't be delivered. Well, why not? There's no telegraph service here, sir. The office is open only for the convenience of important visitors on special occasions. That's why there's no charge. And your passport. Oh, thank you. Now you must excuse me. But if there's anything further I can do to assist you, I am at your service. What about the car? Well, as I have explained... Look, I heard the explanation. We have work to do in Salzburg. We have to get out of here, so get us a car. But I don't think... Look, that don't I... argue with us. Just get us a car, unless you want some publicity on that crummy jail of yours. I assure you that I will do the best I can. And I'll show this gentleman to his room. But take it easy, I'll wait.
But this is not a time to improvise an emotion, exposing your frustrations to... to Bach! I want to play what I feel! Hugo, I want to talk to you. Kindly do not interfere. In future, I want you to play the music as it is written. Take her away now, please. What a little stinker. I've seen some things in my time. I will show you to your room now, if you are ready. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, I'm ready. I say, Mike, you don't suppose we'll have to stay over here for a bit, do you? Not a chance. I'll have us out of here in the morning if I have to start an international incident. Did you send the telegram? Oh, yes. What? Look, Lothario, did you send the telegram? Oh, yes, but it won't be delivered. Come again? You see, there's no telegraph service here. But the office was open. Only on special occasions. But it's all right that it didn't charge me. As I say, it won't be delivered. You sent it, but it won't be delivered. Why? Why, he tore it up. Now I've seen everything. Carry me over the threshold, Mike. Oh, um... Here, here you are. You go lie down for a little while. Thank you, sir. Welcome to Gudavia. I will speak to Herr Blücher tomorrow. He will arrange about the skis. Are we uh, staying long enough for that, Mike? No. We have wonderful skiing here. And we have excellent snow. And, and, and we have wonderful mountains, but no one to climb them. <laughs> the beer is very good, too, yes. but no one to drink it. I will speak to Herr Blücher tomorrow about the skis. And speak to him tonight about the beer. <laughs> I don't believe I caught your name. Anna. Anna. Oh, what a pretty name. <laughs> Good. I wonder if you could direct us to a moderately priced little restaurant, Anna. Or perhaps you could have supper here at the hotel. No, there is nothing at the hotel. Oh, but I'm sure you can find a little something. Hey! You're in a big hurry. Must be the bill. Well, it can't be. Already? Well, it might be for me. After all, very shy girl. She may have decided to act through an intermediary, so to speak. Good heavens. What's all this about? Sounds like a revolutionary crank. You figure it out. Operator! You must help us. The situation is desperate. Our children must be saved. Dr. Bronsky must be destroyed. No signature. Well, it doesn't make sense, does it? Completely cockeyed. Operator. Well, who's Bronsky? Operator. Hello. Hello. Oper Operator. Well, did you have a nice holiday? <laughs> no, skip it. Look, I want to place a call to London. It's urgent and it's personal. Yeah, London, England to Mr. Why not? Well, why can't you? All right, give me long distance. Give me Berlin, give me Munich, give me Zurich, give me somebody, I'll figure it out myself, and I... Why doesn't it? No, I don't want to talk to Commandant Kerner, I've already talked to the phony! All the screwy places I've ever gotten into. <laughs> Let's take a look outside. In the end, the evil will be punished. Gentlemen. Well, Colonel, what is this all about? We were just... Nothing, gentlemen. It is nothing. Nothing? These people are pretty upset about nothing. Oh, hysteria. A little hysterical outburst that... The old uh... chap, Hans, seems to think there's been a murder or something. Oh, Hans, of course, you understand, he's an old man. He has fantasies. One of our poor burgers met with a little accident. That is all. What happened to the poor burger? As I say, it's an accident. I'm just on my way to bring you both good news. You got a car for us. I will know. Not yet. I'm working on that. 
At the moment, I have the honor to inform you that Herr Bronski will see you in the morning. Willie? Who's Bronski? I beg your pardon. Herr Bronski, gentlemen, is Godavia's most celebrated citizen and educator. A most distinguished man. A most distinguished man. Well, that's fine. Only this trip, we won't have enough time. Now, cheerio. Herr Bronski suggests about 9.30 at the castle. Well, we'll let him know. I will call for you here at 9 o'clock precisely. I wonder who makes his hats. Completely deserted. Well, uh, almost deserted. Mm. Shocking manners. Must be a pack of the local teddy boys. Extraordinary place, this. Mm. No life, no love, mm. no nothing. Mm. Ah, this looks a bit more promising, Mike. Hello. Hello in there. Are you open for business? Oh, I think they misunderstood me. <laughs> you know, Mike, I had an experience like that once before in a remote village in the north of Scotland. <laughs> it was very funny, really. I... Oh, hello. I thought you, you, were, you were Mike. We're looking for a nice little restaurant. No, nothing, uh, nothing too fancy. Rare price, you know. Uh -huh. You know one? Uh -huh. Beg your pardon? It's back to English. English. I mean, I've got enough problems. Don't you go psycho on me. Mike, I tell you, I saw them. Okay, okay. You saw what? I saw, I saw a man. An ordinary man, but somehow different. You said a crowd. Yeah. Yes, they all look the same. Now, wait a minute. They all look the same. The man looked different. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? Yes. Yes, they, they, they look like, you know... Ordinary men, but without minds. Soulless. Goons. Uh, Howard. Howard, you're a little overtired. It's been a long day now. Let's get back to the hotel. Uh, Mike, Mike, we won't be able to leave here tomorrow. <laughs> you can say that again unless I can build a fire under that major domo. Now, come, come on. Come on. I'd like to have a talk to that girl, Anna. There, 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 now. Don't be frightened, Anna. We aren't going to hurt you. We just want to ask you a few questions. We're your friends, Anna. Let me go, please. Look, look, you're wasting your time. I'll stir up Happy Jack and see what he's done about a car. Now, tell me, Anna, who asked you to give us this? Please, let me go. I don't know anything. Now, Anna, come along. Well, don't you trust me? No, I don't trust anybody. Besides, what good would it do? Is poor Herr Bigstein dead already? <gasps> Oh, he's the one who gave you the note for us. An hour later, he's dead. So there was a murder. No, please, I didn't mean to say that. Oh, let me go. You get me into trouble with Dr. Macklin. Boronsky. Here we go. Charming girl. Macklin. Dr. Macklin. Slip, obvious. Macklin, I know that name. It rings a bell. That one really now. Hmm. Hello? What?
speaking. Who's this? Oh, Kerner. I've been trying to get in touch with you. Yeah, why don't you stay in your office instead of parading around in that stupid uniform? <laughs> yeah, now what about this Baronsky deal or whatever his name is? Are you going to pick us up at 9 o'clock in the morning or not? Okay, we'll be ready at 9 o'clock on the nose. This is the Schoch Brucken, gentlemen. It was taken over several years ago for Herr Baronsky's work. It was, of course, the residence of our late King Ferdinand. Until, Until he met with an unfortunate accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I, I'm afraid I'm repeating myself. Anybody around here ever die a natural death? <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Kerner. Your train arrives without an engine and he concludes you're a spy. <laughs> <laughs> Please be seated. I wanted to see you largely to apologize for him. He's efficient in his way, but a little simple-minded at times. Spies, indeed. <laughs> What sort of spying do you think we were doing? Spying on what? I can't imagine. No pictures, please. Why not? Oh, I'm not really photogenic, for one thing. And why should an aging scholar like me be of such interest? What we're really interested in, Dr. Macklin, is getting out of here. That's the trouble with newspaper men. Baronsky's the name, if you please. They're worse than spies. They really never forget anything. That must be awkward for you. At times. Yes, at times it is. What is the real story, Dr. Macklin? Story? You wish to know why I'm here in Budavia and what I'm doing? Well, it would be nice to get it straight, not have to invent something to fill it out with. Oh, it isn't really so terribly interesting. It may disappoint you. I was known principally as a biologist. Yes. Five years ago, you disappeared and left no trace. We uh, always figured it might be a political entanglement. No, it was voluntary. At that time, I was interested mainly in longevity. But I reached a point where biology, and longevity in particular, began to depress me. At any rate, I asked myself, why attempt to alter the course of nature? Senile old gentlemen were flocking to me. Finally, I said to them, my dear sirs, if I were to bombard you with gamma rays forever, you would still have to die in your time. No matter what happens to the human brain, muscles, glands, and heart will still atrophy. But why do we dwell on the past, gentlemen? I'm sure you are much more interested in uh, the present. You bet we are. <laughs> I turn from old age to the guidance of the young. Today, I'm merely a humble schoolmaster, but proud of my work. Come and see some of it for yourselves. These, uh, what do you call them, gamma rays? <laughs> oh, I was speaking figuratively. <laughs> Gentlemen, please. I take it then that you're no longer interested in improving the species. Oh, in my humble way, I'm very much interested through education. Is it not right to say that the children of today are the uh, citizens of tomorrow? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we saw at the hotel yesterday. I have great hopes of Hedda. She has a natural talent. But in a few months under my guidance, I assure you, gentlemen, she'll be something quite startling. Yes. I should appreciate it if our little secret could remain our little secret for the time being. Your identity? My work. Sure, for the uh, time being. May I introduce you? Our Paula Wendt, my senior tutor, Mr. Mead, Mr. Wilson. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Frau Wendt is familiar to your country. She's traveled extensively in the eastern states, I believe. In New York only. Is that so? Uh, do you know Charlie Robbins? By I'm afraid not. Ah. Well, if you don't mind, gentlemen, I'll leave you for a moment in Frau Wendt's capable hands. Excuse me. Oh, rather. Uh... Come with me. Yes, sir. This is our modeling class. The boys are making masks for the annual festival. It starts on Wednesday. Oh, I might be able to get something good on that. What sort of festival is it? Traditional. These represent the ancient gods of the mountains. The good and the evil. Uh, who comes out on top? And this is our head pupil, Hugo. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, we've met. Mm. 
Now, this festival... It's a pagan rite, but it amuses the populace. And we try to teach our young people to join in the life of the community. Democratic responsibility. Now, what is this you're working on here, son? A legendary figure. The other masks represent legends of the past. Mine is a legend of the present. Did you go? It isn't exactly a beauty, is it? This is how I see my legend. Hugo, please. My have, have you given that nightmare a trial run through Mitteling? There would be no need for that. Right out of the comic strip. I have heard of them. I understand eminent Americans, your businessmen and politicians, read them with unfailing regularity. Oh, well, there is a little child in all of us. And there must be an answer for you, and I wish I could think of it. Shall I let them have a car now? No. I want to make quite sure they leave with a favorable impression. It'll take a few more days to undo your stupidity. Yes, sir, Doctor. There is something else. Yes? There was difficulty again last night with the... Uh, difficulty? Prowling the streets. They had work to do. Yes, sir, Doctor, but they were seen later by several people. Isn't there some way of recalling them more quickly? I'm a scientist, Colonel, not a magician. Our unfortunates are as much your concern as mine. You are their custodian. I am merely their creator. Yes, sir, Doctor. Just a souvenir of our visit. I'll give you a print. Well, gentlemen, if there's nothing else I can show you, we'll continue our little tour. Oh, I should like to take a picture of the loveliness well. No, I'd rather not. Oh, I want to see everything. Yeah. You'll recover the photograph discreetly. Pretty touchy about being photographed, aren't they? Rather. Did you see Obrowski's face when I took the one of that mask? Sinister looking dump, isn't it? Yes. I wonder just what he's up to here. He was a good man once. I guess he's just blown his stack. Oh? You really think he's crackers, do you? Loony as they come. That mask thing. That's exactly what I saw last night. Only there were ten or twelve of them. Sure, fun and games. Some guys were trying to scare you. I don't think so. They had exactly the same faces. I know they were alive. They moved. Okay, for argument's sake, they moved. So what does that prove? I don't know. I don't know, really. I just think there's some connection between those horrible things and Baronsky. And that mask is the link. Do you think it's our friend, Dexter? Could be. Certain things happen pretty fast around here. Wish I'd have had a chance to talk to him. Too bad. Maybe he left a widow. Let's nose around. He was a good man. He would harm no one. We're certain of that, Frau Bigstein. We're certain he was killed because he tried to contact us. Frau Bigstein, is this your husband's handwriting? Read it, please. He was one of Dr. Baronsky's assistants. He helped with the experiments. What experiments? <laughs> well, just what did he want us to do? Your husband trusted us for a big time, weren't you? He suspected Dr. Baronsky before the experiments began. He only stayed out of curiosity. Then it was too late, he couldn't leave. By too late, what oh, do you... Oh, please. You don't understand, you're from a free country. Here it is not safe to ask questions. Or to answer them. Please, if you would go now. This my, my husband took from the laboratory. I think it's one of Dr. Baronsky's diaries. I don't know if it will help you, but it might. Please take it. No. Thank oh, you very much. Quickly, please.
All right, Mike, you can come in now. Hey, just listen to this. By exposing the immature brain to the gamma ray or controlled radioactivity, I believe it is possible to determine certain developmental factors, both physical and mental. In the second stage, using this as the premise to work on, it is therefore possible to create geniuses or imbeciles at will. The whole future of the human race is already contained within the germplasm, and in a million years of evolution, more or less, the full potentiality of the human mind will come to fruition. The gamma ray merely accelerates the natural process of time. Geniuses and imbeciles. I can't say I understand all that. It doesn't sound like a man in his right mind, does it? No, it doesn't. I hope Anna's wrong about Paula. How could a lovely girl like that be mixed up in this shocking business? That's what I want to find out. Since I heard that tune, your mother and I, we heard it once in Vienna. You would like it there. Papa, mm -hmm. I'm frightened. But in Vienna, there will be nothing to fear. No one to worry you, no one to order you. The children there know how to laugh and sing. You will like it. And you'll play from your heart. My little girl, I'm going to take you there. When? Very soon, perhaps. But Herr Lochner, Hedda is not to play this weak sentimental music. Dr. Bronski will hear of this. Now go. I'm Hedda's father. I said go! Tell Bronski what I've said. I'm Hedda's father. And now leave us alone. Hedda was taken from you by the state. The state? Dr. Bronski? Will he never understand that his work must fail? Will he never understand and realize what he has done to you and to so many others? Will he never see that the minds of people are crowded with hate? Tell him all that! Tell him! Tell him! You will be sorry for this, Herr Lochner. Get out! You will be sorry! Get out! Get out! Go on playing, Hedda. I get your things ready. Say nothing. Be careful. You cannot wait longer now. Mind if I come in? Please do. Thank you. Most interesting. Who is black? My American friend. Do you mind explaining? You know to me? he can mate you in four moves. I do suggest you watch out for your king's pawn. It is in a dangerous position. Oh really? How did you get in here? Oh, you left the door open. I saw the chessboard. I could not resist. Is that so? I never can resist a game of chess. It is like the game of life. Only not nearly so dangerous. Oh. If you want to move one of your pieces without your American friend noticing, I suggest you move your knife. That just isn't done. It is merely taking an opportunity. When you have an advantage, you should make use of it. Oh.
I had good news for you. Wonderful news. Well, I, I can't wait. But it's about your car. With great difficulty, I have found you one. It's jolly nice of you. It will be delivered here this evening. Well, thanks awfully. We don't need it now. We go, we're going to stay. Stay? Yes, we like it here. Fall in love with the place. Can't stop now. Mustache. Oh, cheerio. There. Good morning. Nice place you got here. This way you come to get the formaldehyde out of your lungs? Oh, it's just a figure of speech. I used to be a police reporter in San Francisco. In and out of the lab a lot and in the morgue where they worked on the stiffs. The whole place had a, oh, a strange air about it. Sounds charming. I had the same feeling about that schloss of yours where you work with Dr. Baronsky. Sort of creepy. You're very imaginative, aren't you? No, not very. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of slow at times, Mrs. Went. Uh, whatever became of Mr. Wendt, by the way? Oh, Frau is a courtesy title I have at the school. Mr. Wendt was my father. I have a terrible habit of asking the wrong questions. You know, in my experience, it always seems there's a real nice guy or a very nice girl like yourself caught up in every racket. What do you mean by that? Oh, plain, dumb, innocent, covering up, afraid to talk. I don't know why you stay on and play ball with old Baronsky, but I don't think it's your own idea. You're quite wrong, Mr. Wilson. I'm here out of my own free will. I came here since you asked about him as my father, who worked for Baronsky. When he died five years ago, Baronsky offered me this job. My father worked for him before. They were close friends. Your father may have been a close friend of Dr. Macklin's, but I don't think he'd go for this phony Baronsky character or this fooling around with a gamma ray. And I don't think you would either, if you had a choice. Or perhaps a real friend. Go on, Hugo. This sounds most interesting. Well, sir, Herr Lochner was most insulting, and I was suspicious, so I stopped just outside the door. I could not hear all the words, but considering Herr Lochner's peculiar behavior, I'm sure he intends leaving with Hedda tonight. All right, I'll take care of that, Hugo. Thank you. There's Paula. Go after her and see that she doesn't get to the village. Tell her I want to see her. Hope you yet. Thank you. There's a little child in all of us. A little what? Where's that photograph you stole? Come and get it. <coughs> all right. Keep it. Anyway, I got the negative. With this, I can produce hundreds of photographs. <laughs> There's a little child in all of us. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, you don't. You, you little Hugo, you. I tell you what I will do. What? I'll give it to you for Christmas. <laughs> Hello, chaps. Get him! <laughs> Christmas. 
that'll be all for tonight, Paula. You'd better get some sleep. Good night. Good night. Once more to say goodbye and to thank you. Come on. I couldn't come earlier. Borowski was watching me, keeping me working. You mustn't leave tonight. He knows. I'm sure he knows. We are started and we must at least try. Too late to turn back now. They'll kill you. Then they'll kill me. Sooner or later they would have done that anyway. Yes, but what about it? Hedda. I'll go on, Paula. I shall, I shall never forgive myself. But you are not to blame. You were trapped. That is all. We'll meet again, my dear. Must go now. But soon it will be light. in this way. Just let me help you. But you can't. If you just tell me the truth. The truth. You want a good story, don't you? The readers of a newspaper want a daily dose of excitement. Well, go on. Write your story. And what you haven't seen already, you can make up. Oh. That's the usual way, isn't it? All right, so I've got something to write about. If I stay around here longer, maybe there will be more murders, more horrors, and more bodies Please. for you to cry Stop. over. Will you give me the real story? I want it from you, Paula, now. I can tell you nothing. You mean nothing. you're afraid to tell me? Please! 
Or is it because you're helping Baranski to experiment with human beings? No. No, please believe me. It isn't for myself. Well, what is it then? Who are you trying to protect? Please, you cannot do anything. I can show what's happening to these children. How? By making them the center of screaming curiosity? The little freaks, the little geniuses? Yes, but Baronsky can't always make geniuses, can he? Sometimes something goes wrong and you get a brat like Hugo or a, a mob of mindless goons to do Baronsky's dirty work for him. I'll write the story. I'll bring this horror out into the open. Tell Baronsky. Go back and tell him. Tell him what, Mr. Wilson? Where's the little girl? <laughs> Splendid view, Mr. Wilson. Don't you think so? But you don't appear to be enjoying it, huh? Cut the act, Doc. It's no good. Take a look at the view from over here. I'm afraid I don't understand. You don't, eh? Well, I think I do. I'm gonna find little Hedda if it's the last thing I do here. Keep your gang of goons away from me. They might get hurt. I think it will be necessary to watch the people more closely. There'll be no street gatherings. But the Voronsky Festival! You will cancel it immediately. There's not to be a single mask in the streets tonight. <laughs> Just telling your friend, I have good news for you. Right now, I've got news for you. Ah, yes? Yes, I just saw what happened to Lochner last night. Lochner, I don't understand. I think you do, but we won't argue. Right now, I'm more interested in this little girl, Hedda. What have you done with her? I'm afraid I... You uh, wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Kearney? You just wouldn't know. I got you figured out, you big, fat, stuck <laughs> shirt. Your job is to bully these people, <laughs> keep them in line, while Baronsky does the murdering. I saw Lochner's body. It was lying crushed in the stones in the gully. It's my guess you can thank this wonderful democratic republic represented by Commandant Kerner.
Howard! Howard, are you here? Hey! What's all the excitement about? Don't tell me the people are... You found a little courage. Perhaps. Good. There isn't much time. I've seen Hedda. Boronsky has her at the castle. Well, let's get her out of there. What are we waiting for? It's the police. The, the curtains. Quick, hide behind there. Big sign. We have orders to search the cottage. There's the one here. You. No, I shall be all right. Jalabi. Shh, don't hurt her feelings. She goes like a bomb. Uh, get going, will you? Where'd you get this thing, anyway? Old Carter sent it round this afternoon. Had it in his bottom drawer. Hey, where have you been? Never mind that. Look where you're going. Oh, quiet. Where to? The castle. Oh. Bad luck. Come on, let's get to the castle. <coughs> Turner's compliments, no doubt. Are you all right? I am in one piece. You better run into town and get some help. Looks like we're going to need it. Okay. <laughs> Is usually in his study at this time. How do we get out of here? We have to come back. There's only one way.
Wow. You didn't show us this one, the 50 cent tour. It's sealed off from the other part of the building. Wait here till I fetch Hedda. No, wait. I'll go with you. Please, I, I know what I'm doing. Uh, set the Mark V switch. For what, Her Doctor? Experiment X. killed our father. And now he'll kill me. That is not a good enough reason. Wait. Hugo, think. For once, try to think of who I am. Who are you? Sister. Sentiment has no place in our philosophy. Voronsky has said so. for you and Frau Wendt. I give you one minute to make up your mind. Your 
wasting your energy, Mr. Wilson. You've half a minute. Mr. Wilson, you would have been well advised not to have been so inquisitive. It's a pity you'll never be able to relate in your newspaper the experience you're going to have. It's quite unique. It's also rather painful. The ray has many uses, Mr. Wilson. It can be used to create genius, like Hugo, future leaders of the world. It can be used to create molens, goons, you call them. They can be very useful also, very useful indeed. The brain slowly shrivels up. It is really most interesting. The heat is terrific. Are you feeling warm, Mr. Wilson? You've felt nothing yet. No, you can't escape it. Before your mind dies, you will experience all the extremes of heat. It will not be pleasant, Mr. Wilson.
I hope you slept well. Well, what do you know? Must be the fire. Shock, I suppose. I remember I had an aunt once who fell over the banisters, right on top of her head. It completely changed her. Well, something bounced him back to normal. It's whatever it was was needed. And now all we need is a car. Yes, a car. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Well, well, well. All ready to leave, eh? I trust that you two have enjoyed your little trip. And now that our disagreement with Havoransky has been settled, I have no doubt that Mitterling will return to normal. Time marches on. The ever-changing pageantry of life. <laughs> well, we shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. Or should we? Come on, Heather, you can sit next to me. That is, if uh, Uncle Mike doesn't mind. What do you mean, Uncle Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mike doesn't mind. On behalf of Kutavia, I thank you. The people of Mitterling are proud of you. We are all proud of you. Good night.